Experiment 21. The uh, ionization constant of an acid will be determined in the Ka of a weak acid in, in this experiment. Acids and bases are classified as strong and weak, so we need to know the difference between what is a strong acid and what is a weak acid. By strong, what we mean is essentially complete 100% ionization of an acid or a base in water. The one thing to realize about these acids, bases being classified as strong, is that we have something called the leveling effect. All species look exactly the same if we consider them as strong acids or strong bases. Like, for instance, HCl and HBr, these are both strong acids. If I had a one molarity concentration of HCl and a one molarity of HBr, it's going to ionize and form hydronium ions in its conjugate <coughs> uh, base, Cl minus and Br minus. However, they're going to each have the same concentration of hydronium ion, one molarity, because they ionize 100%. In essence, what we're saying here is there is no HCl and no HBr present as a whole. All of it is ionized into hydronium ion. So the, what the leveling, fleck, leveling effect is saying is that the strongest acid in water is reality hydronium ion. And if we're talking about the base, the strongest base in water in reality is the hydroxide ion because all the strong species ionize 100%. Contrary to a weak species, which is less than complete ionization in water, typically less than 10%, with a majority of them being less than 2 to 5%. Five, two to 5%. There are six strong acids that ionize 100%. HCl, HNO3, HBr, HI, H. ClO4 and H2SO4. Okay, you need to memorize these as the strong ones. All the other acids are weak ones and ionize far less than 100%. There's six strong bases sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and strontium hydroxide. Right? All the other bases are weak ones. So, what we're saying the difference between strong and weak, and this is for acids or bases, is the ionization. If we take a strong acid, say HCl, okay, it's going to react with water and form hydronium ions in its Cl minus. Uh, we can write that one or two different ways. We can write that as an ionization with water, or we can write that as a dissociation. Both ways are ex accepted for writing of acids. So you see this written both ways. The uh, thing to realize is that that H plus and hydronium ion are used interchangeably. So when we say H plus, we mean hydronium, hydronium, we mean H plus. Now, if we compare that to a weak acid, <clears throat> the equation is written exactly the same, either way, as an ionization or a dissociation, except the major difference is the arrow. We write a single arrow for a strong acid while we write the double arrow for a weak acid. That's an indication that this is a weak species and it's ionizing far less than, than 5%. <clears throat> for the strong acid, since we're saying it breaks up 100%, then there is no HCl present in the flask itself. So what we're saying In our flask, that equilibrium, there is no HCl, all of it has turned into hydronium ion. While in a weak species, what we're saying is we have HCN, and really the bulk of it is as HCN, and then we have some hydronium ion, as well as the counter ion, in this case CN minus, but this is in very small amounts. So the majority of the sample, the bulk of it, stays as the weak species. And there's no HCl, all of it turns into hydronium ion, and we have a very small amount of hydronium and CN minus on the weak species. So that's the major difference between strong and, and weak. Strong, 100%, weak, very little. Ionizes into its products. Weak acid solutions do not yield the same pH as solutions of a strong acid at the same formal concentration because they ionize differently. If I have a one molar solution of a strong acid and a one molar solution of a weak acid, they're going to have different pHs. 
That's because that weak acid is going to ionize less hydronium ions than the strong acid. Therefore, it's going to have a higher pH and be <clears throat> less acidic. So the amount of ionization is affecting how much hydronium is going to be formed in the pH of that solution. Weak acids reach a point of equilibrium, which we represent by an equilibrium expression. Say, for example, here I have my HCM plus water form hydronium ion and CA minus. Now, this is just going by Bronsted Lowry definition. We know that th this is my acid component, therefore, water is my base component. So, my acid is going to donate the proton, which is going to form my hydronium ion and CN minus conjugate base. And we can write uh, a K expression for this, which would, which would be your products. The product of your products raised to their coefficients divided by the product of your reactants raised to their coefficients, which would give us something that looks as follows. Uh, concentration of hydronium times the concentration of CM minus divided by the concentration of HCM. This is written the same way as any other K. It's going to be unitless. Uh, it's a case that's temperature dependent. Anytime you talk about solids or liquids, they have activity one, and I put in there, and then we plug in concentrations of, and molarity. Uh, for our aqueous solutions, which would be the case for the acid. Ka, we do a subscript of Ka. Do a subscript of Ka, meaning this is ha acid hydrolysis of an acid plus water. <clears throat> if we're talking about a base hydrolysis, then it'd be a Kb expression. So Ka is unitless as long as we plug in molarities. It is temperature dependent. Also, the larger the Ka means that it's going to have more ionization occurring. If there's more ionization, then that means it's going to be more hydronium ion form, which means that it's a stronger acid. And it's also going to have a, a lower um, <clears throat> a lower pH as well. Okay, So the larger the Ka, the more it ionizes, the more hydronium form, the stronger the acid. Basically, that strength of an acid is determined by the size of that K. The larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. Anytime we're talking about the Ka process, we're talking about acid hydrolysis, which we refer to it as an acid plus water. Uh, in the experiment that we're talking about here, our goal will be to determine the Ka of a weak acid. That's what we're trying to do in this uh, experiment. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to determine the Ka for a weak acid. Here's a generic weak acid, HA, forming hydronium ion and A minus. You set up your K, it'd be your products over reactants. So you have your hydronium ion times your A minus divided by HA. All of these are at equilibrium. Okay. I'm trying to find Ka, so I have one equation, but I have three unknowns. I need to find out what is the concentrations of hydronium, A minus, and HA to, to be able to calculate the Ka. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get around this since I have one equation and three unknowns. So we can write our equilibrium out and set up our ice table, our initial, our change, and in our equilibrium values. We start off, we know the concentration of our initial acid. We have no hydronium and no A- minus to start with. So we know, since there's no products, that this reaction is going to have to go to the right, which means I'm going to have minus on my change for my HA, and I'm going to have pluses on my changes for my <clears throat> products. I need some relationship. Everything's one to one, so I say I'm going to change an X amount of HA. That would mean that I'm going to produce X amount of hydronium and X amount of A minus. Add those up, I get my equilibrium concentrations, which is my molarity minus X, X for hydronium, and X for A minus. All three of these are related through something, that is through my Ka. So now I can plug all those into my equation. And now I have one equation and one unknown. So if I can find X, then I can figure out the Ka of this expression. So plugging those in, we find the expression looks like this. I have X for hydronium, X for A minus, and molarity of HA minus X. We know the molarity. So all I got to do now is figure out what is X somehow experimentally. If I can figure that out, then I can solve for my K. So if we can determine X, we can solve for the Ka for this acid. 
So what is X? How can I determine it? Well, looking at it, you can see in one spot that X is equal to my concentration of my hydronium ion. Is there a way that I can solve for my concentration of hydronium ion? Is that related to anything? Well, I can measure the pH of a solution. If I measure the pH of a solution, then I can get the hydronium, which is going to be my equilibrium a quantity of hydronium, and then I can plug it into my equation and solve for Ka. So X is my hydronium ion concentration in equilibrium, and I can measure that by measuring the pH of the solution. Now, let's refresh our memory on how to calculate pH from hydronium, hydronium from pH. Um, calculation pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ion. Now, the sig figs on this is the number of sig figs in a log, I have that many digits past the decimal. So that means if I had um, three sig figs in my hydronium ion concentration, and I took the log of that, then that's telling me I need three digits past the decimal on my pH. Okay, so you can see I had three sig figs here, I had three digits past the decimal in my, I think that first digit is only setting my power of 10. The other equation we know is hydronium ion is equal to 10 to the negative pH. Uh, this one, the number of digits past the decimal in my pH, will tell me how many sig figs I have in my sig, in my um, concentration. So, example here. I got <clears throat> two digits past the decimal in my pH, then that would mean I have two significant figures in my hydronium ion. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the pH, so then we're going to calculate the hydronium ion and the equilibrium from that pH, plug that into our Ka expression, and then solve for Ka. So the equation that we care about in this problem was going to be the second one. Uh, we're going to measure the pH with a pH major, and then we're going to calculate hydronium ion. That hydronium ion then will give us our X, which we're going to plug into our Ka expression. So part one of this experiment is going to be where we just measure the pH of some common household um, items, okay, and calculate the hydronium ion from that. So you go, we're going to measure the pH with an instrument, then calculate from pH, go to hydronium ion. We will skip the sodium bicarbonate one. We're just going to do the acid components, which means that when we calibrate the pH meter, we're only going to calibrate the pH side, which means a buffer four and a buffer seven when we calibrate the machine. Second part of the experiment, we're going to dissolve quantitatively. It means I need all that sample. If I measure, put it on a beaker to get the mass of it on the balance, I need to wash that beaker and put that in my flask as well. I need to get all of that sample over quantitatively of an unknown acid to make 100 milliliters of 0.2 molarity of an acid. You're going to need to calculate the amount of acid needed. The molar mass is on the bottle of your unknown that's going to be assigned by the TA. You're going to have to calculate how much mass, mass you need to make a 0.2 molarity solution. Check with your TA to make sure you did the calculation correctly. Then what we're going to use is a volumetric flask, which has a long neck and round bottom, and has a mark on the neck. That's where you put your meniscus, where you want the meniscus to go to, to say that you have that volume, in this case 100 milliliters of solution. So you're going to add your acid to it, shake that acid around, some get it all to dissolve, and then you're going to fill to the mark where your meniscus is right on that mark. You can't go past it and take it off. You, you got to basically hit on that mark. So you want to slowly get to it, you know, drop a wise to get to that mark there. Then you put the top on it, and then you're going to invert this about 25 times slowly, getting that air bubble to, to have action through the whole solution and stir it up. Okay, about 25 times. But you get the key here is you got to go to that mark. Okay, you can't go above it. If you do, you're going to make it over. You got to get it right to that mark the first time. Uh, any changes to the directions? Yes. Uh, we're going to make three samples of 50 milliliter of a 0.1 molarity of acid from that 0.2 sample. So we're making 50 milliliters of 0.1 from that 0.2 that we made in that step above. Okay, They're all going to be the same concentration of 0.1. So you're going to have three samples of 0.1 molarity. We're not doing the 0.05 or the 0.025. Okay, So you're just going to end up making a bulk 0.2 
from that bulk point two, you're making three point ones. Okay, so you have to do CV equals CV to calculate. Okay, we're cutting it in half, so easy calculation. Um, and then we're going to do the run on those three solutions to get the pH and get the hydronium ion from that and get the Ka for each one of those. Okay, so then we measure the pH of the 3.1 solutions. Okay, pH calibrating the pH meter. First, you gotta check the temperature of the solution of the room and input that temperature into the machine. Next, you wanna rinse your electrode with DI water and then wipe with a chem wipe, those are the white tissues, okay? Then you submerge your electrode about an inch or so into the pH buffer seven first. Gently stir, stir for about 30 seconds, let it stabilize. Then adjust using the offset knob to read seven. Okay, so when we're in seven, we're using the offset knob to adjust to the seven. Then we're gonna take the electrode out, rinse it, then submerge it about an inch or so in pH four buffer. Gently stir about 30 seconds. Then we use the slope knob to adjust to four. So we calibrate the instrument of what seven is and what four is. Then you place the electrode in tap water until you're ready to use it. Then you rinse the electrode, submerge it about an inch or so into your solution. Okay, let it stabilize about 30 seconds, and then read the pH. Then you take that pH, and that's what you're going to calculate to get hydronium. And then hydronium, you do your Ka calculations, get average of three Ka calculations, give me a standard deviation of that, and that gives me my Ka of this experiment. So the goal of this experiment as we want the hydronium ion of the several acids that we're going to do. And then I want the average Ka for the unknown acid. That means the 3.1 solutions and also the standard deviation of that. We have an additional question that we need to answer as well in this lab report. During this semester, we have used several instruments to conduct the, the experiments after your Conclusion in Experiment 21's lab report, demonstrate how science and technology are interdependent by discussing cell phones. List three features of the modern cell phone that is possibly due to topics discussed in chemistry. For two of your responses, briefly connect the chemistry topic that allows these features to function. Okay, so after you've finished your lab report, conclusion and all, you have another page, I want you to put this additional question and answer it.